Forty-five years ago, at the age of 15, Gary Carr made a decision that would change his life forever. Uh, I had a, uh, a diving accident uh, at uh, Lennox Head, uh, at uh, Lake Ainsworth. Uh, there was a tower there, a diving tower, and uh, I uh, dived off and uh, the water was, wasn't as deep as I thought it was. And uh, I hit the bottom and uh, I became uh, quadriplegic. I learned uh, to uh, walk on crutches uh, a little. Uh, I have a little movement in my uh, legs, so I could do that. And uh, then I came home. Well, I didn't know what I'd do. I was pretty depressed at that time. However, fate intervened. Isabel Jennings, the postmistress at Empire Vale, which proudly claims to have Australia's smallest post office, was retiring and the local people asked him if he'd like to take on the job. In an inspiring example of community effort, they set about making the quaint little building more user-friendly, raising it slightly and building a ramp so that his wheelchair would have easy access from the road to his new workplace, which still retains some interesting relics of a bygone era. Uh, I still have it, it still works. Uh, this is the way it works. That's if you want to weigh something, you put it there. Uh, you get a rough idea of what you think it weighs. And uh, you put the uh, weight on and you, you can work it out. And uh, once you know what it is, you can look in your uh, postage uh, price uh, list and uh, you can check out the price. He took up his position as postmaster in 1970 and has been on the job ever since. Then in 1996, he met Julie Rose at the Byron Bay RSL Club, who became his partner for the next 13 years. Their days were pretty full on. In order to deliver the mail, he had to learn to drive a car, an old Monaro, which he modified to carry his push wheelchair. But as he aged, the pain in his shoulder made it difficult to push the chair. So he's now graduated to a van with a hydraulic lift at the back to lift his new electric wheelchair. Then, just as his life seemed to be getting back on track, Julie contracted pancreatic cancer, which eventually took her life at the age of 49. During their time together, She'd helped him at the post office until passing away after a long and courageous battle against the disease. And I was at a loose end for two or three years after that and uh, I met a chap, a friend of mine from the Philippines and uh, he introduced me to, uh, to Adele uh, and uh, we began to write uh, and I asked Adele would she like to come to Australia to to spend a little time with me and uh, she said she would and uh, she came out uh, and uh, it was a, a very happy time. They were married at Ballina Beach Resort on the 3rd of March 2012. Initially Adele found the transition a bit of a culture shock as Ballina is so quiet and peaceful compared to the hustle and bustle of life in the Philippines. But the people here have made her feel so welcome that she now feels like a fully fledged Australian. Hi hey, Gary, hello Adele. How are you? Thank good. you. Good. Got a parcel for you. Okay, thank you. That'll be good. While the area is quiet and peaceful, their life is pretty hectic. A typical day begins around 10 a.m. when they open the post office and sort the mail that has been deposited there the previous day. Then it's off to deliver it to his 100 or so customers who live in his 10 square kilometre beat. A combination of picturesque bushland and acres of sugarcane farms. Empire Vale is a beautiful area and populated by friendly people who enjoy a good chat with Gary and Adele as well as receiving their mail. Okay, thanks a lot. Big bundle there. Yeah, sure have. And, uh, there's a bit of <laughs> I hope there's no bills. <laughs> there's usually one or two. Yeah, in this respect, the place is a time warp. People in the city who decades ago once did the same 
now have very little social interaction with their posties, who have become anonymous figures flashing by on their motorcycles, dumping mail into post boxes and moving on as quickly as possible. Here, people still look forward to chatting about news of local events. Yeah, mate was telling me the other day, he's, he rang up and three weeks late for the water. I'm on tank water and I think, I'll, well, now you've told me three weeks, I think I better order some. I'll be under the bore water soon. <laughs> well, that's handy to have too. It is, mate. Now, we've got to put uh, 23, 35 on each of those ones, love. Uh, this one here is the same. Uh, you'll need two of these 60s. Uh, and uh, the other two will be for the other parcel. But times are changing, and while technology has adversely affected some parts of the operation, business has picked up in other areas. Letters have dropped off. Uh, personal letters, you get very few, very few personal written letters now. Uh, you get uh, a lot of uh, parcels though. People buy off the internet. How long can Gary expect to stay in the job? While he aims to keep going for as long as possible, nothing lasts forever and he's now into his 60s. However, when he finally does give it away, Australia's smallest post office may well be run by Australia's youngest postmistress. I'm happy doing the job. It's, uh, it's a good job. It's, uh, it gives me an income. It gives me a... Um, and independent, I feel independent uh, while I'm earning money and not being a burden, uh, so to speak. Uh, so hopefully I can do it for another 10 years and uh, see, what, see what happens. You know, as you get older, you, your body starts to wear down a bit and things become harder. So I'll keep going while I can because I'm happy doing the job and I think the people in the area are happy with the service. So. I'll, I'll keep doing it for a while yet, hopefully.